Okay, we've been working on transformations of graphs for a while, and we're going to keep doing that. That is a very big theme. A uh, lot of lot of problems that you'll be faced with in pre-calc and in calculus and college mathematics will be the behavior of functions. So not only do I want you sketching uh, the graphs, uh, these transformations, I want you to now start getting familiar with domain and range. And remember, um, the domain is the, val the behavior, I should say, the behavior of what the x's are doing. And the range is the behavior of what the y values are doing. So if we were to look at this graph, this parent graph right here, before we, before we do this transformation, if we just look at the domain and range of this graph, um, let's start with the range. The range is the height, right? Well, what's its lowest part? Its lowest part right there is at zero. So I'm going to use this notation, interval notation, and I'm going to use a square bracket because it touches the y value at zero. And then where are the y's headed to? Is that graph going to stop? Do those, indi those arrows indicate that it's stopping? No, it's headed towards positive infinity positive infinity. And that's the range. That's what you can expect the y values to do. Now on the domain, this is going to be as you are reading from left to right. And if we could keep zooming out, we would notice that the graph is going to keep going to the left and the right. And there's nothing that's going to stop it. Remember, Parabolas are continuous, so not only is it continuous going up, because it's at a very gradual slant, it's also going to be forever going to the left and to the right. And because we can't touch infinity, you write the notation in this interval, just like this. All right? So that's the parent graph notation. And that's really important that these are, these are the parent graph domain and range. All right, so now let's look at the parent graph of a rational function. Well, if I were to zoom this in, and let's see if I can, um, let's see if I can do that. Ah, uh, it didn't help a whole lot. But look at this graph right here. It's getting really, really close. I should have done this. Really, really close to that that y-axis. And the y-axis happens to touch the x-axis at zero. So it it doesn't touch zero, but look at what's happening to the left and to the right. It is forever going in that direction. So as we read left to right, we're getting really close to zero, but it stops. So look at we're heading from negative infinity. And we get really close to zero, but we don't touch it. So the do domain for this parent graph is we're heading from negative infinity, getting really close to zero. And notice because we're not touching zero, it's an open bracket. And then I'm going to put this union symbol. And then notice on this side, we're again, we're very, very close to zero. And then the graph heads on infinitely in that direction to positive infinity. And what's happening with the range? Well, it's really, really close to zero and then heads up to positive infinity. And it's really, really close to zero and heads down to negative infinity. So that that is going to be really similar to this. If we started down here and worked up, we would start from negative infinity. We would get really close to zero, but not touch it. And then, for really close to zero, the graph is going up continually. And this is what, all right. And then notice, we have to transfer, do, uh, do the transformations. And here, I can go back to this now. And look what happened here. 
This is on the outside, so we know that it got shifted down to. Notice I used the word shifted, not moved. Shifted down to. This point right here went down to here. But look inside the parentheses. Remember, inside uh, parentheses, radicals, um, absolute value, or if something's in the denominator or numer numerator, uh, this tells you to go left and right, but you do the opposite. So what zeroes out positive to, x would be negative to. So that means we shift it, shift left to. So this origin is now right here. Boom. So that was pretty easy. And, and we know that it's a problem because of the x squared, the x squared. And it's going to uh, being being stretched or or it's two times as tall, right? So normally on this one, when x is one, the y, the range is one. But now, when x is one, right here, if we would have if we would have left it at the origin, it would be clear up here. So notice we're here. The next point is we move over one. It is up two places instead of just up one place. So two times as tall or, or stretched by a factor of two. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put two times as tall. That's not a very accurate way. Uh, anyway, I'll come back to that. So now let's look at how the domain and range has changed. Well, the range now starts at negative two and it's touching it. We're down here at negative two but it's still going up towards positive infinity. And there's nothing that's changed for the domain because even though it's been moved over, look it, it's still going to keep going that way and it's going it's going to keep going to the left and to the right. So that domain and range is still negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, so that's what you're going to be doing with all of these. You're going to be noticing uh, by looking at the graph, what is the range? So in this case, the range, the height, is getting really close to negative 3. But it starts from negative infinity. It works up to a height of almost negative 3. And then from a height of almost negative 3, it heads on to positive infinity. Well, what happened to, what are the x's doing? Well, there's this asymptote at where the x is 1. So we know that as we're headed from negative infinity on the x's, we go clear over here to positive 1, but it doesn't touch it. And then we start from 1 without touching it, and we head towards positive infinity. And I'm going to quickly go over the next two types. So absolute value, notice what the typical absolute value graph is, the parent graph. The domain is going, I'm going to change this back to black, from negative infinity to positive infinity. Again, the domain would be the x values. What are the x values doing? Well, they're going infinitely to the right, and they're going infinitely to the left. But what is the height doing? Well, the height touches here at 0. And then, as it's going to the left and the right, it's also going up towards positive infinity. All right? And then, ah, the square root function. Look at the domain. The domain is only with the positive integers. So it touches 0, and it's headed off to positive infinity. And look at the range. It also touches zero, and even though it's going up very slowly and gradually, it touches zero, but it's also headed towards positive infinity. And then we, we, we look at their graphs. So for the domain, nothing has changed. It's still going from the left to the right, but look at what's happening with the range. The lowest point is now 3, but it's still headed up towards positive infinity. And on this square root, oh, because of these shifts, well, the domain, we're now at here at negative 6. It's negative 6 that will zero this out. 
So we're going to touch where x uh, is negative 6, and we're headed towards positive infinity. And look at where we're at with the height. We're down here at negative 2, and we're headed towards positive infinity. That's what you're going to be doing, but you're still going to be telling me. So for this one, it shifted up. You have to write the word. I'm just going to save some time. Shifted up 3, and then you're going to write the other transformations. Here, it shifted down 2. It shifted left 6. And then what are the other things tell, telling you to do? All right, that's it for this.